Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again. Unfortunately, today might not be the day we review Scream 5 as we were going to. Uh, we're doing laundry, and so, you know, usually laundry days are busy days. You know, we don't do a lot, we just kind of you know, doing laundry is such a draining chore for all parties involved. <laughs> so anyways, I thought I should just review a Goosebumps book. I just finished Welcome to Horror Land, and I'm in the middle of another short story book of his, and I hope to finish that pretty soon. But anyways, I am here to review Go Eat Worms. I liked the episode as a kid. I don't like it anymore. It's a very average story. And the book, you know, it's surprising because the book is actually... This is probably the grossest thing I've ever read or watched or seen out of anything ever. Well, I have seen some grosser things, but it's more, you know, I've seen some, you know, serial killer type of... Uh, stuff online, which is grosser, but this book comes pretty close. Like R.L. Stein, he's a nice guy. He's a, you know, he's such a professional, and he seems on the outside like you know, there's no way he could write stuff that is fucking revolting. But I'm telling you, this Go Eat Worms book, it it takes the cake. It is so gross and so oh it I I could barely read this book. I could barely get through it. It gave me a headache. You know, it wasn't a good story. The story was very bad and it had a lot of improvements it could have made, but the biggest problem was how gross it was. And also the biggest advantage. So it's a weird ass book. It's it, it's all about this kid named Todd who loves to torture worms and he just he loves everything about them. He's obsessed with them. And he's got a bitchy ass sister named uh, what's her name? Regina or something. Her his sister is pretty bad too. She's pretty weird. But a lot my big problem with the book is how unfocused it is. As my, as my review has kind of been, admittedly, so far. First off, the book is about his worm obsession. Then the book becomes about this guy who he hates. And he's really jealous of him. And he, you know, he thinks he's a, a, a shithead. And he wants to, you know, find out what science fair project he's doing. Then the book is about the science fair. And it's all about all these fucking shitty ass things that happen at the science fair. And then the book is about him cutting up a worm. And he thinks the worms are coming after him. And then the book is about his sister and how she's actually... Which I will say, there were some things that I really liked. One of them was actually a change from the episode. Where his sister turns out to be the one... Uh, putting worms everywhere, which I thought that was actually a great twist. Uh, I love that. At the same time, it kind of, once again, it goes against the book's message, which is, you know, don't, don't hurt animals. You know, you, you see a lot of kids, they torture animals, they, they pick up bugs and tear their legs off and do things like that. You know, don't do that. Uh, it's a good message for kids, honestly. Uh, but this book, the way that it goes about it, is just so unfocused and so chaotic that that message doesn't come through. The only thing that comes through is how fucking disgusting this book is. I mean, I, I, I could never have imagined that R.L. Stein wrote this book, ever. I mean, yes, it, it has his trademarks where... It's repetitive, 
you know, the whole book is just gross out, gross out, gross out. And then, oh yeah, and then at the end it becomes about giant worms who have been living underneath the ground. And, and I actually kind of like that idea. That's fun. Uh, I thought that maybe that would have been a better way to get the message across the whole story instead of uh, doing this weird story uh, through the first three-fourths. You know, maybe they should have had that be the whole book, uh, or, or more than half of it at least, you know, not just this little sequence. And to top that off, all of that is ended when literally, guys, I'm not kidding you, the worms see like the shadow of this Robin project that his sister made, and the worms are convinced that that was a giant Robin. And I, that is the stupidest fucking shit I have ever heard. I mean, it is such a, a, a dumbass thing to do after setting up these scary worms, the whole book, to have it be where, oh, it's this trick where it, it's this shadow of a little Robin project. You know, that is really retarded. I do love the ending the twist ending where he has given up collecting worms and torturing worms and now he is instead collecting and torturing butterflies and it, it's pretty dark actually like this kid he he's on track L let's just let's just admit it he is on track to being a serial killer like i got serious serial killer vibes from Todd and Go Eat Worms. The way that he he kept on going after that other guy in school, you know, trying to spy on him and find out what his project was. The way that he he wanted to get revenge. I mean, he had all the characteristics of a serial killer. Uh, so I would say that that's pretty interesting because if I were Arl Stein... I would have actually written I would have actually written a Fear Street book where it's Todd all grown up and he's the killer uh of he's going on a killing spree. I think that that would have been really cool. Uh, it, 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 okay, okay. I was going to say he reminded me of a certain serial killer, but no, not not now that I think about it not really. But there's some really goofy things in this book too. Even though it is really a gross-out book, it has some goofy, childish moments, in my opinion, to try to take away from the the, the gross-out, dark shit that goes on through the whole book. There are some, uh, like, for instance, probably the, the most weird thing. One of their science projects is literally creating a skyscraper made out of worms. I mean, that is just the stupidest thing. I, I don't know what they were thinking with that. See, there were things like that that kind of ruined this book and, and things that were giving me a headache. I was like, okay, I'm into this. You know, you got this evil kid. He's torturing worms. You know, uh, the worms are going to get him back, which I like that. I kind of like that idea a lot. And the, the whole portion of the book where the worms are appearing everywhere, you know, that was really the best part because it was just so over the top. Like, guys, it was gross. They were appearing in his food. They were appearing in his bed. And then when, after his parents discovered him in bed with worms, which was really kind of gay, uh, that's pretty funny. He's in bed with a bunch of worms. <laughs> it's like it reminded me too of uh, of Stay Out of the Basement, the the episode where they pull off the the sheet and it turns out that there's worms all over the bed. And I thought, oh, it just this show actually the show did a good job of showing the worms. Uh, if only they had been more ballsy about it and, and went all the way instead of stopping and making it a more childish episode a more a more comedic episode it would have been a lot better but 
He's discovered in bed with worms. And guys, I was starting to throw up. Like, I have, I never would imagine that reading a book, reading just words on a page, or in my case, listening to words, I was, this whole book, I was, I was starting to throw up. I was starting to gag. I was feeling sick to my stomach. I could I couldn't eat anything. Like I it, it was hard for me to eat. It was really really bad. Uh but he they tell him take go take a bath. You know, you got all this worm crap all over you. Uh clean up this mess and go take a bath. And he goes into the bathtub and worms are in the bath with them like oh, See, I'm starting to throw up just just thinking about it. Like, that's how gross this was. And, you know, that whole section with that, and then it turns out it's his sister. I like that part a lot, actually. And I wish that the rest of the book was as good as, as, good as that. I also kind of like the part where the huge worms were going after him. So I'm stuck because on one hand... On one hand, sorry... On one hand, I would give this book like a B plus or a B or an, even an A minus. On the other hand, this book is so gross. It's so unfocused and so goofy that I can't really say that this is an A book. When I first finished this book, I gave it an F. I put it at the top of the Fs, but I still gave it an F. And I got to say... Regardless of how much I love some stuff in this book, especially the ending. Because in the ending, he's collecting butterflies, and he's killing these butterflies. I mean, this book was dark. And then he turns around, and there's a giant butterfly behind him. I thought that that was a fantastic uh, image to picture. Like a giant butterfly, like, oh, that would be really scary. Uh, honestly, like, if you think about it. Uh, you know, the buzzing and the, the the wings and the, oh, that, that would be really scary. And he's in the basement, too. Uh, so add on to that. Um, but still, I can't, I can't say that this is a great book overall. It has so many flaws that prevent it from being a good, a, a good, like, just, you have to take everything into account altogether. You know, I've loved some elements of, of his Goosebumps books in the past. Like in Stay Out of the Basement, I love some stuff in that. But I can't say that it's a fantastic book overall. I'm going to have to give this book an F+. Plus slash. Uh, see how hard it is when you write a book like this? It is such a weird outlier. It is such a strange book. Weird, weird, weird. But I am going to stick to giving it an F+, plus because overall, it is a failure of a book. It doesn't get its message across because it's too chaotic. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye, everybody.